welcome to your first last session today. Uh, so I'm happy to see so many of us together for celebrations. Uh, we have two talks on proving what we cannot prove in cryptography. And the first talk uh, is on uh, powers of hierarchical identity-based encryption. And it's a uh, joint work with uh, Mohammed Mahmoudi and Amir Mohammed. And Amir is going to give the talk. Okay. Uh, thank you, Priya, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Amir Mohammed, and I'll be talking about limits on the power of hierarchical identity-based encryption. Uh, this is joint work with my advisor, Mohammed Mahmoudi. So an, an important goal in cryptography that we, we'd like to study is what are the limitations of P, that is, what, well, what primitive P can or cannot give us, and what is the complexity of P, that is, what are the assumptions uh, that we need to assume or the primitives that suffice to give, to give us primitive P. And in our work, we prove one such limitation for HIBE, which is hierarchical identity-based encryption. Specifically, we show that uh, HIBE does not give us collision-resistant hash functions uh, in a black box way. And to our knowledge, this is the first uh, limitation result regarding the black box use of HIBE. And at first glance, this may seem like a quite an, it's not immediately clear why we study such a question. And, of course, uh, and it might not be such a natural way to get collision-resistant hash function. Uh, but the corollaries that we get from this assumption, from this result, is, is quite, are, are quite impactful. So HIB gives us, uh, implies primitives such as CCA2 public key encryption, and collision-resistant hash function is also implied by other primitives, such as fully homomorphic encryption and private information retrieval. And our result shows that anything on the left side does not imply anything on the right side in a black box way. And so the previous results that are related to ours is, first we have Simon in 98, which shows that one-way permutations doesn't give us collision resistant hash functions. And then we have the work of Heitner, Hodge, uh, Reingold, and Segev that show that uh, trapdoor permutation doesn't give us collision resistant hash functions. And the final work, uh, the, the recent one, is by Asherov and Segev, which show that IO plus one-way function doesn't give us collision-resistant hash functions. Uh, we will rely on and extend the techniques of the first two results. And as for the, ra for the last result, it is quite significant to us because their result combined with Watch's result, which shows uh, that we can get functional encryption from IO, uh, um, uh, provides an alternative proof to a corollary of our main theorem, namely that identity-based encryption does not give us a collision resistance hash function in the black box way. Um, uh, but it doesn't say anything about hierarchical identity-based encryption, which our work covers. And so the plan of this talk is I'm going to first define what is hierarchical identity-based encryption, and then I'll just say what are black box constructions, what are black box separations, and then I'll just talk about our, an, uh, our main result and talk about the main ideas on how to prove this. So identity-based encryption was um, introduced by Shamir in 84, and it's not until 17 years later that we had the first uh, candidate construction from bilinear maps by Bonnet and Franklin. And I'll uh, describe how identity-based encryption works using this uh, scenario. So let's say we have a company with a manager and the, the manager has a master secret key and a corresponding master public key, uh, he would uh, distribute and publish the master public key to everyone. And suppose we have an external uh, user, Alice, who wants to communicate with one of the company employees, Bob, and so she would use an identity-based encryption scheme to encrypt uh, uh, the message with respect to Bob's, Bob's public identity. In this case, it would be his name. And when Bob wants to decrypt this ciphertext, he would request a secret key from a manager, and the manager would give him a secret key that's specifically for, the, for this employee, for Bob. And so this allows Bob to decrypt the ciphertext and obtain the message. Note that it is different than normal public key encryption in that Bob does not, dis does not uh, uh, publish some kind of public key uh, that allows Alice to encrypt. Alice only needs to know Bob's public identity his name, his email address, whatever is public, and she would encrypt it with respect to that identity. And a natural extension of that would be hierarchical identity-based encryption, where we have a higher entity, a higher layer. Say we have a CEO that now uh, 
ge generates secret keys for managers, and that allows the managers to use these secret keys and generate secret keys for uh, the employees that are under them. And they can only do, the, do that for the employees that are under them. And the, then Alice and Bob can com communicate as before. So in defining the security of identity-based encryption, we have to consider the following scenario. Suppose we have two employees who decide to collude with each other and combine their keys in an attempt to uh, recover the message of a cipher t using from a ciphertext that was intended to their colleagues, Dave. And when we define with security, we should be able to say that even, f even, f even with, collusion, with such collusion, we should not be able to recover the message that was intended for another recipient. And more formally, the, uh, the, secu uh, the security is defined using a security game between an adversary and a challenger, where given the master public key, the uh, challenger, uh, sorry, the adversary can request uh, secret keys for identities of his choice. This models collusion. And then once he does that, he can adaptively uh, choose the, the ID that, we'd be challenged, that it wants to be challenged on. This, then, it would, then the challenger would send an encryption of, the, of, a, of, a, of a message, either zero or one, using the identity that was selected by the, the adversary, and the adversary was, to win the game is supposed to guess which bit was challenged, which bit was uh, encrypted. So now I'll talk about black box instructions and separations. So uh, when trying to uh, uh, study the limitations of a primitive, we have to define the framework under which we, we explore this limitation. And the most widely used model to, uh, to the, the most widely used model is the fully black box construction model because this captures most of the uh, efficient and desirable crypto primitives. And so here's, ho here's how we'll define it. This was introduced by Impagliazzi Rudic and later formalized by Reingold, Travis, and Vatan. So fully black box construction of Q from, from primitive Q, of Q, primitive Q from primitive P uh, consists of two Oracle efficient algorithms, Q and R. Q is an efficient implementation of primitive Q using primitive P as a black box. And for any adversary A that breaks primitive Q, we can create an efficient adversary R that uses A in a black box way to break the underlying primitive P. And it is easy to ascertain that such constructions relativize. That is, even uh, so, for, for th that this means that for any oracle, if P exists relative to this oracle, then Q would exist as well relative to this oracle. So one way of, of ruling out such a black box construction is to show an oracle relative to which P exists, but Q does not. And that is one way of, of uh, how to show what, is, what we call a black box separation. So again, uh, the black box separations. In the way we define black box separations, in, uh, uh, usually and in our work, we're going to show two oracles, the P provider oracle, which facilitates the secure instantiation of primitive P, and a Q-breaker oracle which allows us to break Q. And together we call this the separation oracle. And we allow, since this is a relativized oracle, a relativized world, we allow P and Q to call, to call uh, the, uh, the separation oracle. We're going to use B, the Q-breaker, to break Q, and the P-provider to, to instantiate a secure P. And we should make sure that when we add this Q breaker oracle, we, we wouldn't even, we wouldn't break P in the process. That's one of the things you have to make sure of. And so in our work, our P provider is an HIBE, is a, is a randomized uh, HIBE oracle, which I'll define later on. And we want to show that HIBE exists relative to this oracle, but collision resistant hash functions do not. And the collision resistant hash function we will be using is what we call a SAML oracle, which I will talk about later. It's the same oracle that was defined by Simon to break the collision resistant hash functions. So our task is twofold. First, we're going to show that uh, collision resistant hash function can be broken relative to this oracle. And second, we have to show that HIB exists relative to this oracle even after we add such a, uh, even after we add the SAM oracle that breaks the collision resistant hash functions. 
Okay, so here we go. So first, let's rule out collision resistant hash function. We have an oracle called SAM, and we, we, our goal is to show a polyquery attacker that can break hash functions. So what does the adversary do? Adversary simply asks SAM, asks uh, a query to SAM with the circuit of the hash function as input. And what does SAM do? SAM is an oracle that takes an output compressing circuit and outputs a pair of colliding inputs where each input is uniformly distributed. This immediately gives us uh, uh, a way to break the hash function. And that breaks, that simply breaks hash function. So, th so that's an easy way, that's the easy part. So the, the hard part is to show that whether the security of HIB is now compromised because we added such a very powerful oracle to, the, to, 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 our, to our separation uh, result. So no, normally w when we want to prove that something, that, uh, that a primitive exists, we usually use techniques such as lazy evaluation, and such as in the work of Mpagliazzo Rudic, but it will not work here because we need Sam, we need Sam to be dependent on, on, on this RHIB oracle. And he, here, here, since it does depend on it, we cannot use lazy evaluation. And so we need to use something else called the compression technique, which I will explain. And uh, so next up is we have to show that, so now we ruled out ha collision resistant hash function. Next step is to show that HIB exists. And we're going to do that uh, using what we call a compression technique. And for, for simplicity of this talk, uh, I'm only going to do it for IBE. Our proof extends to hierarchical, but the main ideas will show up here as well. So in building an IBE from, R, uh, from RIBE, the randomized IBE oracle, uh, this is similar to the way that we get public key encryption from trapdoor permutation. Uh, from random trapdoor permutation. Instead of having to, uh, two, uh, two permutations in the, in the trapdoor permutation oracle, now we have three permutations. So we added this new permutation that allows us to generate keys for any given identity. So this provides an, uh, an index into, into, into gen, and gen provides an index into encryption. So this allows us, for example, to implement the setup algorithm of the IBE by simply running uh, set up on the master secret key and allows us to generate the keys using the key gen, using the, uh, the, the middle layer, and allows us to encrypt and decrypt using the last layer. And this is how we build an IBE using this ideal oracle. Now what concerns us more is uh, the security of, of IBE. And does this, how can we prove the security of such a scheme? In particular, an adversary that um, has a master public key, chooses an identity, and then, re and then receives an, an encryption of a, of a challenge, is supposed to invert the challenge and, find, and uh, find X star. And it can do so by calling, using calls to RIBE, the randomized IBE oracle. And we proved that using compression technique. This compression technique was introduced by uh, Gennaro and Trevisan in the context of proving crypto primitives. And at a high level, what this does is, Suppose we have an, uh, a permutation that is, represented in, that is represented this way, using some number of bits. And suppose we have an adversary that can break this permutation somehow. It's, it could invert this permutation, like for example. Suppose that it could invert some number of points in the permutation. Now the compression technique says there are two algorithms. There is an encoder that depends on the adversary and, and outputs a compressed version of pi and a decoder that also depends on the adversary but reconstructs the original uh, permutation. If we have two, if we have, if we can show that uh, such uh, encoder and decoder exist, then we can show that only a few number of permutations are good for the adversary. And by good means, now, if an adversary could uh, compress, if, a, if an adversary could compress this permutation, then there are only a few number which it can, which it can invert, which it can break. And since there are only a few number of, of, of such permutations, we can say that random permutations are hard. Because when we draw them at random, there are only a few that, uh, that are good for the adversary. And so if you want to demonstrate this using an abstract example for the case of random permutations, suppose you have a random permutation here where each point, uh, here, e each black point is a, is, a, is a point in the permutation. And suppose we have an adversary that inverts these permutations. Then we only need to explicitly represent these points. 
because we could use A to recover, to invert the other points. So look at how much we compress this permutation. We now need only to represent a small number of points, and we could, we could use the adversary to invert the rest. So we compress the permutation by a lot. And this shows that we can represent the permutation using a small number of bits, therefore only a small number of permutations are, in, uh, are good for the adversary. And we can do the same thing for random chapter permutations. Uh, we could say that if an adversary that has a public, that accepts a public key and a challenge, uh, FPK of X star, and it's supposed to invert, X, invert the challenge and get X star, it's supposed to, it can do so using I, one of two ways. It can either recover the secret key, and using the secret key, it could then invert, it could do F inverse and find X, X star. That's one way to do it. But if it does that, it, may, it means that we could compress G. And this G is a random permutation that reduces to the case of inverting random permutations. The other case, it finds X star without finding a a SK, the secret key. That means without finding the secret key, it's just going to look at, it's going to look at FPK X star and it covers X star somehow. But that means it's, we, we can compress this permutation the FPK permutation. And since FPK is a random permutation on its own, we can reduce this also to the case of, reduce, of, invert, of inverting uh, one-way permutation. And uh, now we have to make sure, recall that, we have to make sure that by adding SAM, we don't break anything. So uh, the, 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 the good thing is here that even if we give A the SAM oracle, the powerful oracle, um, the, the work of Heidner et al, show that they can turn this adversary into another adversary, B, that makes slightly more queries, but the SAM oracle won't interfere with our compression technique. This means the SAM oracle won't be uh, helpful in uh, providing us uh, with a way to break HIBE. We can still do the compression lemma and it will still work. So we can, that, that's, that's what they show. And so we come to our original question, which is how can we show a compression technique for our oracle, this RIB oracle? We want something that, we want something that is in, in the same manner as what we did for random permutations and random trapdoor permutations. Specifically, we want to show that if an adversary can break this RIB, then there are only a small number of oracles that it can do so. And if you would recall, the, the, the problem with IBE adaptive security or the issue here is that the adversary could issue inversion queries to the challenger. It could ask uh, the challenger to, to supply him with secret keys of identities of his choice. And the second issue is that the adversary chooses the challenge identity. This issue, the, these two issues weren't present in the random permutation or trapped permutation games. And so this is the new issue that we handle here and we provide a new compression lemma that handles these two cases. So for the first issue, the adversary can ask Inversion queries. So, for the, so this, this, we can also think about this issue in the context of random permutations. That is, the adversary could also ask inverse queries to the permutation. So this new thing here is pi, pi, pi inverse. This is the new, uh, the, the new oracle that A has access to. So, uh, so let's say that these are the points, the red points, that A could ask the inverse of. So we can't say anymore that these points uh, are being inverted by A because A is asking them, uh, A is asking the, the permutation to invert it for it. So we can't say that these are, in, uh, these are you know, uh, points on which A, A can invert. So we have to pull them out of the, of the set of points that A could invert and explicitly represent them. So now we're going to pull out these points these red points from the set of points that, we, that A claims to be good at, and we remove them and put them here so that we explicitly represent them. Because they're not, they're, they're, A is not good at them anymore. But we still show that even after doing that, we can still do a, a, a good enough compression to show that A, uh, to show that A can only do on, on a small, can only do well on a small number of oracles. And this is for random permutation. We could, we could do the same thing for our case, for uh, the RIB oracle. 
except here, uh, except here the uh, adversary can ask inverge, inverge, inversion queries from the middle layer, gen. And so we could say that if the adversary could ask inversion queries from this layer, then we could still be able to compress this. And by compressing it, there are only a small number of RIBE oracles that uh, the adversary could break. And for the second issue, here we, we, the adversary is choosing the ID, the ID star. So this means that um, since it's choosing the ID star, we, we can't or we do not know of any way to compress this oracle if, gen, if, we, if we allow gen, the middle layer, to be a permutation. However, we show a way to do though, we show a way to compress the oracle if gen is made to be a, a, an injective uh, trapdoor, an, an injective function instead with a very large output. If we allow it to do that, then we can show how, how to compress this oracle by, co by a constant number of bits. However, a constant number of bits is not enough to show a good compression. We, I mean, it, uh, even if we show a constant number of bits of compression, uh, the adversary will still be able to uh, break the oracle with uh, uh, constant number of, uh, you know, uh, the probability is not enough, so we have to show something better. So we, so we use the fact that it can invert, that A could invert this uh, function for an exponential number of multi master public keys, and therefore uh, we have an exponential number of, and therefore we have an exponential number of bits that uh, we can compress. So the main idea here is that we uh, change from using uh, permutations to using trapdoor injective functions, and that A could um, invert for an exponential number of master public keys. So putting things together, now we have an Oracle SAM that breaks collision resistant hash function. We have an Oracle RIBE that gives us HIBE. And we ruled out collision resistant hash functions using SAM. And we proved that the HIBE exists using our enhanced compression lemma, or enhanced means that we, uh, we deal with adaptive adversaries as opposed to the normal random permutation game. And even if we include SAM, we can use the same, we can use the same techniques by Heitner et al to show that even with SAM, HIBE is still secure. And the same techniques apply here. So the open question here is that we have, um, we, we're still looking for more applications of the compression amplification techniques that we developed here for adaptive adversaries. And uh, for example, here we're handling non-uniform proofs of security. And uh, we'd like to discover alternative ways of getting to this separation. For example, we have uh, the, we want something similar to what Asharov and Segev did by showing that we want to show that I.O. doesn't give us adaptive HIBE. Uh, note that the recent result of uh, Berkersky and Segev show that FE does not give, uh, gives us um, semi-adaptive HIBE. So uh, if we get, if we have a result that shows that FE gives us fully adaptive HIBE, then it uh, extends our result. And finally, we want to see if there are any extensions to non black box reductions, uh, similar to what Pass et al. did for uh, proving the uh, one-way one permutations doesn't, it does not give us collision resist hash functions in a black box way. So yeah, thank you. Some time for questions. I have a question. So the uh, the uh, AES paper uh, that that rules out non-black box reductions. Is, is is that correct? Which one? The AS15 paper that you mentioned that rules out non-black box reductions. Rules out non-black box. Non-black box uh, constructions of collision-resistant hash functions from. I don't. I don't believe so. Do, does it? But uh, isn't it the case that if you're using obfuscation, you're kind of obfuscating the code, and you have to uh, you have to uh, assume that the uh, you have access to the code of the construction? Yes, but they, they do so with respect to I/O. I mean, the oracle that they use is I/O and one-way function all together in one box. Okay. Okay. So I don't think they they they, they uh, the oracle that they use the separation oracle allows 
that uh, allows it to use one-way functions in the black box way, but it is in itself black box. Mm -hmm. So both, 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 both impossibility results are fully black. Yes. Okay, so let's thank Amir again.